My name is uh, Robert Vieira. I am a division manager in our Orange County operations for Care Ambulance Service, also part of Falk Southern California, a global healthcare company. Um, well, at my level as a manager, I help maintain the operations, uh, specifically in Orange County and I'm part of the leadership team. Uh, to keep the wheels rolling. We are an ambulance provider. Someone calls 911, our ambulance shows up, provides good patient care, works with our fire department partners and other agencies and transports and treats patients uh, and takes them to the hospital. Um, so it entails everything from being part of a, a safety committee, uh, regular manager meetings. We have a, over a thousand field employees, uh, probably over 30 operation managers. Um, and we operate daily 24 seven uh, dispatch center, a billing center. And so I'm, I'm part of the team that helps bring them all together. Um, keeping the glue, maintaining processes. Um, it's certainly a lot different than when I initially started out uh, at this organization. Um, but I guess my main role is I tell people, you know, we, we treat people nicely, do, right, do, do things right, and, and we keep the wheels rolling. And that's, uh, you know, I mean, by saying keeping the wheels rolling, we're really um, continue to respond on calls. You know, oftentimes we might have fires, uh, little little fires that pop up, little issues or challenges. Um, I'm here to grease the wheels and help assist all our managers and serve them so they can serve our, our field employees out in the field who then can serve our patients. So, and that, you know, whether it's business licenses, uh, um, working with uh, uh, employee interaction, uh, whether it's investigations or, um, concerns that are brought up by patients or, you know, recognizing our employees for the good things they do from uh, uh, patients making us aware of that. We want to be sure we recognize our employees for their good work. Um, so it's, it's just a wide range of, of keeping the, the business going. So. Sure. Well, I, I think that, well, I mean, that part lays a little bit how I even got started, because when I started, I was probably in the same position many of many that are watching this. Um, you know, right out of high school, uh, I went I went skiing and snowboarding for a couple seasons, and that that was a fun thing to do. I, what my track was not going to college. I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So they reached a point when I was on the mountainside and figuring out what I wanted to do and continue to do and be productive. Uh, I saw an interest in, in ski patrol. And so I walked up and asked that ski patrol officer, I said, hey, how do I become ski patrol like you? And one of the first things he mentioned was becoming an EMT, emergency medical technician. So when I got home, I signed up for an EMT class and uh, through, at the time, a North Orange County ROP, a Regional Occupational Program. And I got my EMT certification. And during the course of that class, I found out I could work for an ambulance provider. And so that was uh, a long time ago, I think it was 1995. I signed up and, and interviewed for a position at Care Ambulance Service and I was hired. And I've actually been at Care Ambulance Service ever since. So to be on the ambulance itself, education wise, uh, you need your emergency medical technician uh, license, a certification, it's usually a semester class. Um, for many of the uh, employees that we have working for us, are seeking other career goals such as firefighting, uh, becoming a police officer, nursing, medical school, PA school, um, a physician's assistant school, uh, just a wide range of things in the medical field. And they initially start out by getting an EMT license to get a feel for what it's like in the field clinically. Um, and so many of them, in order to pursue their goals, they have to uh, accumulate so many hours uh, clinical hours, hands-on patient care, and it looks good on the resume. It also builds uh, a good skill set of being able to interact with patients, so, uh, you know, uh, customer service. Some of our best employees often come from a customer service field, uh, whether it be a Starbucks or In-N-Out or, or hospitality, uh, mainly because they know how to communicate verbally and interact with someone, um, and they hone those skills. And then the clinical side uh, is something that can be taught. Um, you know, hospitality, you know, that takes a, a, a special unique skill set of making someone feel very uh, engaging with somebody 
in their in a moment when they've had to call 911. It's not their best moment, and you have to go in and, and assist them and do the best you can to take care of them. Um, personally, uh, once I was an EMT working on the ambulance, uh, you know, I, I wanted to uh, move my way up, so I started taking some college courses, working on my degree, um, taking a lot of specific classes in the industry, uh, uh, maintaining my, I still to this day maintain my emergency medical technician license, but to be truthful, I have not been in the back of an ambulance in probably 15 years. Um, but I keep those skills set up because I'm still represented of the company, I'm still an EMT, and I do practice my skills uh, uh, on occasion, and I have an opportunity sometimes to use those skills. Um, the internship, that's part of your EMT course, you do some ride-alongs, uh, in an, on an ambulance before you get your EMT license and you do some uh, clinical hours in a hospital to get your EMT license. But in order to work for an ambulance provider, you get your EMT. Um, and once you're in that EMT class, it really exposes you to a lot of things and be able to help guide you uh, for an ambulance provider. And an EMT isn't just for an ambulance provider. Many EMTs work in hospitals as an emergency room technicians. Um, even movie sets, you might have a, a EMT working on a movie set. Um, many of those jobs, those, those jobs you wouldn't think an EMT is working, um, take some experience first, and many of those individuals get that experience uh, on an ambulance. Um, but lots of different roles for emergency medical technician out there, um, including the next step after that is becoming a paramedic. And in our local area, uh, paramedics work for the fire departments uh, in Southern California. Uh, we do have a lot of private paramedics that work on the ambulance. Uh, we have some in our organization as well and so that's another avenue that you can another stepping stone um uh, that you can aspire to so if you're trying to figure out what to do after high school and i and i i myself was in that same position and in and i i, I i've mentioned this many times to people i've been asked this question a lot I think if you find something that interests you, if you see something out there that you're curious about, go find somebody that does that and take the time and, and reach out to them, uh, whether it's just a cold call or ask around if you know anybody in that field and ask for some time with them, write down some questions, bring a notepad and pen so you can demonstrate you're ready to listen and write down and take their input and ask them, how did you get to where you're at? What did you do? Um, I, I gave the example earlier of what I did is I reached out to that ski patrol officer and asked him, what, how do I do what you do? I never became ski patrol, but it, at least it put me in a direction and I found out something else I could do locally the year round versus ski patrol, which is only part of the year. And then invest, you know, then you could look at, is this a sustainable career for me in the future? Um, maybe there's a way to get your feet wet. Maybe there's a way to internship, but you're not going to know any of that. Uh, by by not reaching out to somebody and even if, by using the tools you have in front of you searching the internet and, and looking nothing is going to replace reaching out to somebody and meeting with them and you may be nervous uh, if they want to even take the time to talk to you and I will tell you most people love talking about themselves most people love telling a story um, just like uh, uh, is reached out to me to sit here and talk. I want to add value to other people's lives. And that's why I agreed to sit down and talk. Um, and I'm happy to continue to do so. And I've, I have been part of some of the panels here in the past and tr truly, truly enjoyed it. Um, so I think the number one advice is if you have an idea, just an inkling of what direction you may want to go in, go into, reach out, find somebody doing an interview. Them. And not just one person, go to multiple people. And most people do not do that. Most people, you're ahead of the game. Uh, you're ahead of others by doing that. And so when it is time to interview for a job, a position, maybe in that field, you may get asked the question, you know, how did you select this field? What got you interested? And then now you can tell your story. You're not answering an interview question per se. Now you're telling your story. And people love to listen to stories. And you can say, well, you know, one day, I decided I want to go in this direction. I reached out to so-and-so. He works for this station in this department. I reached out to so-and-so. I, I, I had some FaceTime with him. I, they offered me the opportunity. I asked and they offered me the opportunity to sit down with him and I asked him some questions. And it really sounded like it may be a good fit for me. I took these then steps and found out, yes, it was a good fit for me. And then you can move on from there.
So I, I think that's uh, just one action step you could take. That's probably the biggest, in my opinion.